I've received a few emails over the last couple of days, especially this morning and last night, about a new clip from Brett and Heather Weinstein, or I, or I guess it's Brett Weinstein and Heather Haying. I, I think they have different last names. They're Dark Horse podcast, and folks asking me to weigh in about this and a, a little bit more generally about Brett. Listen, uh, historically, I've liked Brett Weinstein and thought he had a lot of interesting things to say and actually asked interesting questions, not bad faith questions. You know how sometimes where it's like, uh, this man says he had sex with Obama, but CNN won't cover it. Why not? Asks Tucker Carlson. And it's like a completely bad faith question about a debunked uh, convicted con man. OK, we dealt with that earlier this week. Sometimes people ask questions in bad faith. Some years ago, I thought that Brett Weinstein was actually asking some really interesting questions about different things, even if I didn't agree with the direction that that things were going as he explored the answers to those questions. Some of the recent stuff is a combination of everybody is against me, like Twitter and YouTube and all the mysterious things are happening, searches I didn't do are popping up on my laptop, like just really paranoid stuff. And listen, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they aren't after you, but just really out there stuff. And then now coming up with some COVID vaccine and test claims for which there's just no evidence. And again, I don't have a problem with asking questions, but at a certain point when we have zero evidence to just say, well, I'm just asking questions and the fact that we don't have answers is part of the conspiracy is problematic. What am I talking about? Here's the first clip. Brett and Heather are um, talking about COVID tests. And Brett raises the idea that the tests are deliberately unreliable so that if you want to say there's tons of cases for political gain, you can. And if you want to say there's very few cases for political gain, you can. I believe that that's the point he's making. I'm going to play it for you now. Is it possible that really noisy COVID tests are a feature and not a bug because it allows you to claim anything at any moment, mm -hmm. right? And is that, is, you know, I, I do think I, I have a sense of foreboding around the upcoming 14 months mm -hmm. that the U.S. presidential election is uh, going to create a... Um, a fertile landscape for psychological operations of many kinds. We're going to have many claims of misdis and malinformation over yep. presumably true things will be dismissed, false things will be portrayed, all of the usual stuff. And the ability to have a viral boogeyman that yep. you can call forth at any moment by declaring that some set of illness is this thing uh, may be the reason that the tests aren't any good. Because if we, you know, if you could just simply go to CVS and buy a test that was reliable enough that, you know, it really mm -hmm. gave you a confidence that you either did or didn't have the thing, right. um, then we'd be in a very different place because we would actually be able to generate information about what is or isn't circulating. Yeah. So listen, Brett's not wrong that the tests have been all over the place. I've told stories. I mean, just look at my stories alone. When I went to Spain in 2021, when you needed a negative test to come back, we got these tests, my girlfriend and I, where you do a video conference and they watch you test yourself. And then with that, you get a certificate saying you're good to come back. And my girlfriend got two consecutive positive tests. And we said, this is crazy we eventually scrambled on a Monday Catholic holiday in Spain to get a PCR test at an ER. It was negative. Months later, we found out those tests we had were defective. There was a huge number of that particular test. It was the Illum, I believe. They were just straight up defective. They would say positive when you weren't. It almost prevented us from coming back to the United States. Other situations, my sister and stepmom both got COVID same day, at the same thing, same symptoms, same trajectory. One of them never tested positive. They obviously had the same thing. Why was that? I don't know. But so, so I'm with Brett that these tests aren't perfect. There's really weird things. As the variants change, their effectiveness seems to change as well. But these are wild claims with no evidence of some kind of 
apparently Democratic Party conspiracy to use deliberately unreliable tests that they, I guess, had some role in putting out there in order to control or impact who wins the 2024 election. There's just no evidence of that. Present evidence and I will consider the claims. But at a certain point, we have to demand evidence. And the answer can't simply be part of the conspiracy is covering up the evidence. We're not going to get anywhere with that. Here's another doozy from Brett and Heather, which is that I guess he's saying Jill and Joe Biden got a different vaccine than we got or no vaccine at all. I don't really know. Take a look. I do not trust that Jill Biden or Joe Biden got the same vaccinations as citizens. Right. So, so, so again, what did Jill Biden and Joe Biden get? Did they not really get a vaccine? Is that the conspiracy that the vaccine is too dangerous for people like them to get it? So the dangerous vaccine is for us, but not for them. Or did they get a different, better vaccine that's like more effective in some way or safer as far as and and why? Who made it? And why would they get that? And and why wouldn't everybody get it? Is it too expensive for the vaccine that's good? Or that you have to at some point present some evidence. And that's the problem I'm having with the degree to which Brett is quote just asking questions. Questions are fine, but at a certain point, you can't lack any answer forever because they are covering it up or don't want you to know. We need to have some factual basis to make these claims. I'm not seeing it. And I know it, I know that talking about Brett Weinstein is like when you talk about Jordan Peterson. Oh, David, you're you're deliberately missing you're either deliberately misinterpreting what he said in order to attack it, or you're not smart enough to understand what he said. Okay. If anybody can answer some of these questions as to is there any evidence, send it to me, and then I will do a follow-up.